game that he and his teammates were competing, but in the end, quote, they got me, and the Guardians certainly did to the tune of eight earned runs on eight hits over just four innings of work. And it's baffling because Barrios Ardenswelling said that in between starts, he's been feeling strong, he's been feeling good, but for the second consecutive outing, he had no answers. And that's been the story of the season for Jose Barrios, hasn't it, since that disastrous opening day performance here at Rogers Center. Speaking of Rogers Center, I guess we could put away those home road splits now for Jose Barrios because the Cleveland Guardians beat him up in their building and they beat him up here in this one as well and this has just been the story for Brios. every time he seems to put things on the track and have some success he regresses it's one step forward one step back for him continually this season it has to be frustrating it has to be maddening um, it has to be maddening to see some of the balls they're leaving the yard for Jose Brios. Josh Naylor goes ahead and takes an elevated fastball over the opposite field wall I don't think Jose Brios would throw that pitch very differently if he had it back. Same thing for the changeup to Jose Ramirez that was off the shoelaces. Jose Ramirez golfed this thing. It probably would have hit the dirt if he hadn't swung at it and he hits it over the right field wall for a home run. You tip your cap in moments like that, but there are things that Jose Brios can clean up in his game, certainly. We're not seeing the swing and miss from him. We're not seeing him getting hitters to expand and chase off the plate. And when Jose Brios is missing, he's missing on bad parts of the strike zone, over the plate, not off of it. Those are the things that need to be corrected going forward because this is important pitcher hazel not just for this season for the blue jays but for many to come manager john schneider admitted that his guys are not playing up to their standards he said but we're going to continue to play really competitive baseball he said it's on him his coaching staff and the players to try and quickly turn things around well and it's the teams that they're playing isn't it hazel we see the blue jays losing here to cleveland a team that's right behind them in the wild card race you're directly helping the competition that's trying to catch you we saw the blue jays drop two at camden yards to the baltimore orioles the baltimore orioles who are ahead of the tampa bay rays now in the standings hazel i didn't have that on my bingo card to i didn't be honest with you. <laughs> didn't have it on mine either i don't think they printed that on the bingo card because Nobody expected the Baltimore Orioles to be in the position that they are now, but they beat the Rays on Friday to move ahead of them. They are right on the heels of the Toronto Blue Jays. So every time that you are losing games to teams like Baltimore, like Cleveland, like Minnesota, you are helping your direct competition get back in this race, tightening those wild card standings. The Blue Jays looked like they had a pretty comfortable lead at first place in, in the wild card race in the American League, and that has been eroded in a very significant way. So they need to turn things around and beat teams like like these so that they guarantee themselves home field advantage in a wild card series. Well, they will turn to one of the newest Blue Jays, Mitch White, to try and right the ship as White makes his Rogers Center debut Saturday afternoon. Blue Jays Central will tee you up at 2.30 Eastern right here on Sportsnet. If you're a fan of the Blue Jays, you can bemoan eight runs given up by Jose Barrios all you want, but the truth is Cleveland really only needed one based on, for the most part, the seven innings of brilliance thrown by Cal Quantrill. How did he do that? He was fantastic. Really two pitches, Jamie. He used his sinker up in the zone and in on the hands of right-handed hitters to set up the cutter away. And when you can work both parts of the zone like that, it really keeps hitters off balance. And I said going into this game, he is not afraid to pitch inside. I remember him as a 17-year-old, and he kept coming in there. And what that does is it gets hitters conscious of the ball inside, and it makes them susceptible to that cutter away. It's a bit of a new pitch for him the last couple of years. Used to be more of a slider, a little less velocity. Now he's up 88 to 90 with that pitch, but it complements the sinker at the top of the zone and in beautifully. Bo knows he just missed that one. Good approach. He's telling his buddies he just missed that one. Just stayed on that a little bit longer, and I just it feels like he just pulled off and just used his hands. He knows where he went wrong. But then Quantra a little later on, he goes the curveball a little bit against Kirk to get ahead early in the count. Puts him away with that same breaking ball. Look at the catcher here. He's just pointing away. It looks like they might have had a little issue with their pitch com right there. But he just said, away, Cal. That's how your night's going. We'll just tell him what's coming. A lot of emotion from Quantrill right there, and that's what I remember from him as a 17-year-old. He is passionate on the mound. He's a bulldog. He is not afraid of any hitter, and he continued to pound that fastball up in the zone, but also in on those righties to open up the cutter. Cal Quantrill pitched a fabulous game tonight. He, he pitched. He didn't have to be 98, 99 miles per hour. He used his pitches all around the zone to keep hitters off balance. And now this wild card race is getting <laughs> tighter and tighter, it seems. So the Blue Jays need to string some victories together and do it soon. They'll throw 
Mitch White at the Guardians on Saturday. So we hope you'll join us for Blue Jays Central coming your way at 2.30 Eastern Time, 11.30 Pacific. We'll see you then.